Hello, my name is Joanna Lestray, and I'm from Advocate Lutheran General Hospital in Park Ridge, Illinois. The advent of fractional flow reserve to diagnose significant coronary artery stenosis has supplemented the angiographic data obtained during cardiac catheterization. Major trials have demonstrated the utility of the FFR modality and its clinical outcomes in patients with multivessel coronary artery disease. Our first case includes a 63-year-old male with a history of hypertension and a strong family history of premature coronary artery disease. He now presents with chest tightness and dyspnea with six flights of stairs. He exercised for 10 minutes on the Bruce protocol, but was limited by symptoms of chest tightness. His ECG demonstrated 3 millimeter horizontal ST depression at peak exercise, and his echocardiogram demonstrated a mid to apical anterior septal severe hypokinesis. His symptoms and his abnormal stress tests warranted a cardiac angiography for assessment of his disease. His coronary angiography from an outside hospital revealed extensive coronary artery disease and bypass surgery is recommended. The patient returned to our office for a second opinion. At that time, his medications include metoprolol, clopidogrel, simvastatin, aspirin, and enalapril. Here we have uh, left coronary angiography and a significant stenosis in the left circumflex artery of 85% with adenosine hyperemia at 140 micrograms per kilo per minute. The left circumflex artery had an FFR value of 0.79. The right coronary artery angiography demonstrates a 60% proximal lesion in the right coronary artery. The FFR calculated in this area was 0.88. The right coronary artery angiography demonstrates a 60% proximal lesion in the right coronary artery. The FFR calculated in this area was 0.88. To localize the culprit lesion causing physiological significance, the FFR wire remained distally as the balloon angioplasty is executed at the proximal stenosis. With the FFR of 0.63, we can conclude that the dis diffuse distal disease contributes to the abnormal coronary physiology. The distal disease is identified as significant but not amenable to PCI. The LAD disease, in addition to left circumflex disease, Bypass surgery is recommended as the treatment of choice. The debate between percutaneous intervention and bypass surgery for the treatment of multivessel disease will continue as diagnostic and treatment strategies evolve. FFR identifies culprit lesions in the multivessel CAD to improve prognosis and symptoms, and FFR tailors revascularization to the hemodynamically significant lesion. Thank you for your time.